under assault right now. It's not alarmism, it's not exaggeration. This type of weather modification puts out chemicals and toxins, some known, some not known. Many people who try to debate this issue, if they ask you why they should believe this is going on, we have film of it happening, end of the argument. That's it. There's no debate, no discussion, this is not speculation. Oh. Also indicative of different materials being expelled from different portions of the aircraft. So again, this amounts to weather warfare, period. The U.S. has historically engaged in weather warfare around the globe. This is historical fact. We have uh, data going back to Vietnam, 1968, Project Popeye. Uh, 1976, the U.N. passed resolutions forbidding weather modification in wartime. So again, this is not speculation. We, have, we live in a society this that's been trained to pattern. shut down when they hear the word conspiracy theory. They've been conditioned pretty well. But the bottom line is this, is, this is the issue that can't be ignored any longer. People can ignore Kennedy. People can ignore false flag events like Vietnam and even whatever happened on 9-11. But this issue can't be ignored. When In the North State, for example, we took variants of different planes, the different configurations of spray apparatus. This is an ongoing experiment. There's likely many different configurations. We see aircraft trails that have different color composition. So this is an ongoing experiment of which we are all a part, like it or not. More configurations. Obviously, there's a whole lot of planes with a whole lot of tanks doing a whole lot of something. So uh, this kind of footage should not be ignored. Clearly, these are what would appear to be passenger planes, most of them with windows. So uh, there appear to be many different types of aircrafts involved in the spraying activities. This is what we have. Again, global geoengineering, the ever-changing experiment. And we are, again, part of that experiment. Russian scholar warns of secret U.S. climate change weapon. We have Russia engaged in this as well. We also have China. And this is one of the reasons why it's so hard to get any sort of mainstream coverage, because the big players are all involved up to their eyeballs. So uh, that, that's one of the reasons the uh, media coverage is so sparse, but it's coming. What do weather weapons do? They wreak havoc in countries without anybody knowing they're even under assault. In the case of floods, droughts, all of this is a form of weather weaponry and weather warfare. And there is no arguing that we are all a part of weather warfare when our climate is being impacted the way it is right now. Again, countries around because we wanted to make uh, the weather a little bit better. There will be monsoon failures during that period, there will be huge hurricanes. The global studies indicate there will be some impact on precipitation patterns. It might involve large-scale regional agricultural disruption lasting a number of years. Potentially, two billion people could have their food disrupted by such interventions. That the aerosols can, at least in these model simulations, or indicated by these simulations, can offset most climate change in most places most of the time for both precipitation and runoff. But it's likely to cause some damage in some places. We have clouds in the sky we've never seen before. Almost every day I'm seeing clouds I've never seen before. And NASA has been even named a few of these new clouds. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting, but NASA is a corporation. I want you to know that. Uh, NASA has also uh, conducted a research program in what they call metallized fuels. We're actually putting aluminum oxide right in the fuel because it has two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen. So during the combustion process, it releases all that oxygen and dramatically increases efficiency, but it leaves the aluminum in the air. We got things coming from sky down, and it's a huge, huge problem. Because as it comes down, what happens is a couple of things. Is that it actually is in our air, we breathe it. And as we breathe it, it's actually going to go up to our nostrils, into our brain, easiest access to our brain frontal lobe. The contaminants that are in that have been identified, which already been mentioned, are aluminum. Aluminum is the number one neural uh, free radical generator to the brain to cause early apoptosis, which is early death of brain and it begins to set off the scar tissue, which we call the amygdalin, which is a pot, which is part of the uh, chemical matrix related to Alzheimer's. I'm a neurologist practicing in Reading for 17 years. And in the past five years, I have seen the number of patients with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases tremendously increase, almost quadruple. Uh, I became interested in chemtrails 
about eight years ago when I was in Hawaii, and the Hawaiians are really being very vocal about it. I concur about the increase in number of Alzheimer's. They have been able to take the aluminum and micronize it, which means it'll stay up longer. But it also means, and I don't know if any of you have noticed a metallic taste in your mouth when they're spraying, but you inhale that, it goes up through your cribriform plate and into your, through your sinuses and into the brain. As you heard, to spray nanoparticles, very small particles, these nanoparticles, they basically trigger a programmed cell death in the brain. And that is the ultimate path we see in Alzheimer's. That's problem number one, because when we look at the Alzheimer issue, we say those are the old. The real problem is, and the real scare I have, is as I am a father of two, I am a grandfather of three, so the drama is, is our children. ADD started in the 70s. Autism was not on the radar. There was no documents, there was no information. It was one in 100,000 children. Today, what we have is one in 48 boys. I was part of the early group that was looking for aluminum in ADD and ADHD. And all of those children that started to develop those phenomena had high levels of aluminum. When we figured out protocols to detox them out, to free the body of those particular contaminants, what happened is that their brains came back. When we do this to the age, it doesn't come back as quick, but it will come back. But I'm seeing Alzheimer's in 56 years old. Back in the 70s, Alzheimer's when you were 80. If you remember eight to 10 years ago,